Okay, welcome everyone to this session about the Outcomes and Effective Practices Portal. Uh, my name is Ingvild Bjornvold and I'm with Social Solutions and I have with me two Marys, Mary uh, Winkler from the Urban Institute and Mary Terzian from Child Trends. Um, some of you may have noticed that over these past couple of days, many of the uh, high-performing organizations that have been presented and hi been highlighted have uh, worked with uh, David Hunter through a theory of change process. And so some of you may be asking yourselves, now what about us who uh, for some reason cannot go through such a process or are in a place that's you know different and you're um, sort of wondering what kind of help can you get? And uh, this Outcomes and Effective Practices portal is for everyone else who's not doing that and uh, can't afford perhaps to go through such a process, but also for um, those who have gone through that kind of a process and um, are needing tools to figure out how to uh, measure your outcomes and other um, things that have to do with implementing a model with fidelity and um, something that's likely to be effective that was discussed in earlier sessions today. Um, I can say for myself, I was working, I've been with Social Solutions for six years now, and before that, I was working with a small nonprofit in uh, Washington, D.C., where um, I was fortunate enough to have a full time position on performance management, and I was able to do quite a lot of research to figure out what works within the types of programs that we were running. But um, I can tell you, doing all of that research, it was a lot of work and finding measurement tools was incredibly, incredibly difficult. And so for me personally, being able to uh, show you this outcomes and effective practice portal is, it's a little bit of a dream come true for me, I have to be honest, because I really, at that time, I really wanted something like this. And since that time, I've worked with so many organizations that have been asking exactly the same questions that I was asking, which is, you know, how do we know, you know, what research is out there and, and how do we know how we can measure these things? How do we find these measurement tools? And it's just really hard and what we're trying to do here is make it easier for you. And so we're going to, I'm going to pass it on to Mary Winkler who'll get started with the presentation. And then we're going to give you a live demo of, um, of the Outcomes and Effective Practices Portal. Thanks, Ingvild. Uh, I think the mic's okay. So, um, good afternoon. We're glad to have a standing room only audience. Uh, we, um, as Ingvild said, we're, we're all very excited about this effort and, um, and we know many of you are. I think two years ago we, we did a preliminary overview and, uh, at, at the open, one of the opening sessions and there was a lot of enthusiasm. So here it is two hours, uh, two hours, sorry, two years later. <laughs> Small <laughs> slip. <laughs> it feels like. <laughs> And, um, and we're here um, with, with a little more meat on, on this product. And we're gonna talk a little bit about how we, how we got where we are, um, as Ingvild said, do a demo, and then um, talk about where, where we're going next. Um, as you can imagine, this, this is a really, really involved venture. It's, it's gonna cost quite a bit of money. We've, to this point, um, as this collaborative effort between uh, Social Solutions, Child Trends, and Urban Institute, uh, have really invested a lot of sweat equity. I mean, we've been fortunate to have some operating support and we're finally um, seeing some results where the funding community is, is coming around to this. So uh, we're, we're excited and, and it's, it's gonna open windows to move this a lot faster than we have probably in the last two years. Um, so we're three equal partners in this and um, the one, I just wanna tell you a little story. I mean, this is uh, some of the, there are a lot of skeptics out there. I mean, we've been in this, we've been cordial, collegial, friendly, enjoying each other's company. Um, and uh, we've had funders who have uh, outright challenged us. And they're like, where's your business plan? Where do you have all this codified? How do you know that one's not gonna jump ship the next day? And, uh, you know, and, and we, we've been kind of shocked and stunned by this. And, um, you know, and we've had other external people challenge it as well. So in response to that, just to, to make the skeptics feel a little better, we are pretty close to signing a, um, what we're calling a collaborative agreement. It simply just lays out expectations, roles, responsibilities. Um, 
but it's it just was really surprising to us because everyone keeps saying public private partnerships you know how important these are and this is the way to make the world work and um, even still we were we were somewhat challenged so um, that's just a little bit by way of background um, you know I feel like we're preaching a bit to the converted as to uh, why we need to do this um, you know we, you've been hearing about it for the past day or so uh, but um, we all know that nonprofits need to be more accountable and demonstrate results. And um, at this point, evaluation performance management just is no longer a discretionary activity. I mean, in this area, uh, era of scarcity among resources, um, if, if you can't demonstrate results, your, your very survival is going to be threatened. Um, there are a lot of experts out there now saying that in this economic downturn that there is going to be a compression within the community. It's, it's inevitable. So um, you guys in many ways are going to be ahead of the curve here because you're already thinking about this. You're, you're um, internalizing it within your organization. And so, so that's the good news. Um, from a capacity perspective, I mean, th there, there is limited capacity among many nonprofits. And it will vary um, given your level of resources internally and other supports. But um, this is a product that it, it will help, we hope, to, to build the capacity. I mean, at some level, at some level, level the playing field, but um, and help people answer the question about effectiveness and efficiency. So, you know, many organizations think they're being effective, but how do you really know? Um, and many people, when they start to measure their outcomes, find out, wow, it, I, it, I, we're not where we thought we were. So, this is a product that we hope will help you um, move forward in that charge. Uh, regarding the, the efficiencies, um, it just it doesn't make sense for each of you in the room to have to kind of sort through, wade through all that material out there and figure it out on your own. And so that's what we and our partners are, are trying to do for you and simplify and, and put things sort of in, in a single location. I'm going to jump ahead here and talk a little bit about what we think makes the portal uh, unique. Uh, the focus here is on performance management, not evaluation, not random control trial experiments. We will incorporate that information to help you and to guide you so that you can have a better sense of what works when you're managing your services. But this is a tool first and foremost to help you manage to outcomes. Uh, as I said, it's, it's, it's kind of like a warehouse. Everything's going to be in one place. You're going to have um, outcomes, indicators, measurement tools, ma you know, all of the, the tips uh, around how to use those tools, and then also the, the um, effective practices. You know, what, what does a good quality program look like? How do you know if you're getting there? What, what are the appropriate, how do you identify your target audience? Um, things like that. It's designed for practitioners, not, not to exclude researchers and others who may want to come to this site. Uh, it's it will include research-based content that is written by practitioners and or reviewed by, uh, I'm sorry, by experts and, and or reviewed by experts. And I'll talk a little bit about that later. It includes both evidence-based and promising practices. We'll, we will try to flag where something has really kind of go, gone through the gold standard. But we will likely for now, knowing that there are gaps in the research, provide a range uh, for initial guidance. And ultimately, we're just trying to help you translate, make better translation of research into practice. So just going back here. Um, so this is just a little graphic to show you. There are a lot of tools out there, a lot of registries. We've gotten a lot of queries about, well, how is this different? It seems like there are other things out there already doing it. And, and we're fairly confident that that's not true. I mean, we are. Uh, there are ev other evidence-based lists. I mean, Child Trends has a lot of that in, the, in their um, databases. But this, on top of that, includes um, performance outcomes. It's going to include the measurement tools, uh, things about how to better implement and manage quality, uh, how-to information, again, emphasizing practitioner focus and expert craft. So I'm going to turn it over to Mary, who's going to dig deeper into um, sort of the framing. OK. Thanks, Mary. Um, I am Mary Terzi, and I work at Child Trends in the Youth Development Program area. And my focus is on evidence-based programs and practices, as well as evidence-informed programs and practices. Um, this, uh, I thought we'd talk here in the presentation about what is performance management. I know all of you are currently engaging in it in some way. But we wanted to go through a little bit of a clearer definition. 
Um, and this is kind of presenting performance management in terms of a perform performance management system. Uh, and here it's presented as four different activities. The first activity being shown in the upper left corner is uh, developing a performance strategy. So that's really identifying standards for program, imp program implementation, such as benchmarks and also identifying outcome measures and indicators that are meeting full and relevant to your program. The second activity shown in the upper right corner is about performance measurement and that's about developing data systems or um, using a data system uh, or an MIS system like efforts to outcomes um, in order to uh, assess, uh, sorry, enter and track data basically. And then you're also collecting data on a routine basis. The third activity related to a performance management system is the reporting of progress shown in the bottom corner there. Um, and that's when you actually go ahead and analyze the data, try to interpret it, and give feedback to your managers and staff. After that, um, engaging in a quality improvement process would be the fourth activity, using data to improve program operations and creating a learning organization. And so by using the data, that means, for instance, um, one example of that is when, um, as, as for instance, like a program such as a Pace Center for Girls, they're collecting data on attendance. By the way, I think Jill is here. Is Jill oh, here? are you here? I saw Jill in the room. Okay. Yeah, no. no, maybe not. <laughs> it's an alternative high school for girls, and they collect attendance data on a daily basis. And when a, a, a girl doesn't show up to the program, um, they will contact the family member to say, where is she today? So that they are acting on that data and um, in, in turn managing performance. Um, and so that's the, because their goal is, their benchmark is that all kids come to the program um, or to the school every day. So the goal of performance management is really to improve program quality, promote consistency of program implementation, and use data to inform program design and improvement efforts. The problem is that little attention is paid to performance management and instead funders and organizations often focus so much on evaluation, outcomes evaluation, does your program work, instead of seeing if it's being run on a consistent basis. So this next slide shows kind of what we think of as becoming a performance driven um, and becoming performance driven is a process. So the first part of the process is really um, conducting a needs assessment and a needs assessment involves identifying risk and protective factors in your community of the population you're serving or if you're in a school, in a school, uh, in, in the school. And um, really trying to find out what are the risk and protective factors there um, that relate to your outcomes of interest and then that would inform then your program design. So if there's a particular issue in your community that you would want to address that in your um, program and if your program isn't currently addressing that you'd want to maybe modify your program to include that. Um, also identifying your population to serve. Um, that's another part and if a program already knows exactly what population it's serving it can make sure that it's reaching that intended population and there are different ways to do that. Um, having a clear logic model is the third step and this, all of this needs to be done before you even start doing performance management. Managing performance is that big yellow arrow there, and that's what we, um, the OEPP is really focused on, and we, um, that involves collecting data on performance measures implicated by the logic model in an ongoing way. Um, afterwards, you can conduct an implementation evaluation once program operations are stable, and you can see basically why is the program working or not working, and then adjust operations accordingly. Then the next step is, okay, we, we see the operations are stable, we're, we're getting it down now, we, we know what our program's doing, um, let's go ahead and evaluate. And often people start with a quasi-experimental evaluation, um, and then if, 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 if possible, they'll move on to a randomized controlled evaluation, which is the highest standard of evidence for effectiveness. But as I mentioned before, many people often start at the end of the arrow um, kind of starting with the evaluation before they even know really what the implement implementation of the program looks like. Mm -hmm. 
So um, sometimes people mix up uh, performance management and evaluation. So this slide kind of shows the differences between the two. And Child Trends recently actually produced a brief um, on this. This actually comes from our research brief. And basically, that there's, there's several differences, six main differences between performance management and evaluation. Um, the first is that performance management is typically, typically carried out by internal staff for program management purposes, um, whereas an evaluation is typically conducted by outside researchers, such as Child Trends or Urban Institute. Um, in performance management, the data are collected, as I said, for management purposes, whereas in an evaluation, it's collected for research purposes, to answer research questions. Um, in performance management, data are collected on an ongoing, routine basis, whereas in an evaluation, they're usually collected um, once or at periodic intervals predetermined by the program design or evaluation design. Also, program management uses real-time data. So data, um, like attendance data, collected in real-time are acted upon and inform um, program decisions. Whereas evaluation use data that are collected at specific time points, as I mentioned, and as a result, they're analyzed um, more in depth and the findings are delayed so you don't really know exactly how to interpret the data until later on. Finally, um, or not finally, but uh, performance management is an evolving process so that it will change over time depending on the logic model of the organization, if the mission is changing, if you're adding program activities, for example, or if you're facing unique challenges. Um, your performance management activities will, will evolve. Whereas with evaluation, um, it's pretty, the evaluation design is set from the beginning. You have an evaluation plan, you carry it out. So the purpose is predetermined. Um, finally, performance management manages towards benchmarks, um, predetermined standards of implementation that have been identified. Um, whereas evaluation looks at, so for an in instance with attendance, you might have a goal of 100% attendance. But with evaluation, um, it's really interested in changes such as increases or decreases in that outcome. So for instance, with the Pace Center for Girls, oh, I don't have that slide, so I'm not going to say that. But with the, I'll say it actually. Um, the Pace Center for Girls, they use the, um, their own staff to collect the attendance data. Um, and whereas in evaluation, they would ask an outside researcher to um, either use their data or kind of help them decide how to use that data or how to collect it. Um, the, in the Pace Center for Girls, they're collecting their own data and they're acting on it immediately for management purposes. Um, and in evaluation, attendance data may be used to inform, um, look at the relationship between attendance and outcomes. Does greater attendance relate to better outcomes, such as in an implementation evaluation? Or in an outcomes evaluation, looking at um, do certain activities lead to increased attendance? Um, also, using ongoing data, um, performance management is constantly collecting data. It can be on a daily basis, whereas in evaluation, you would be collecting it, like I said, at, at certain predetermined intervals. Um, so in that case, um, where so an evaluation with attendance data would look at, for instance, has attendance improved since last year, for, for example? Um, and finally, one might be using attendance data for, for, more, um, uh, for different purposes, depending on the logic model. So you may have a goal, OK, we want 95% attendance as a benchmark, but that may change. So it may change. You may decide, really, we want 100% attendance. Um, whereas with evaluation, it doesn't really matter. It's more about how much attendance is achieved. Um, so I think that kind of relates to the next um, row. So I'll stop there and I'll say, let uh, Mary continue. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay, everyone, one more slide, and then we're getting to what everybody wants to see, the demo of the portal. Um, can you hear Mill right now? Okay, great. So, um, <laughs> you cannot hear me? Okay, I think I'm gonna hold, hold this. Can you hear me now? Yeah, 
Okay, so um, in the uh, outcomes and effective practices portal, we have um, a number of things that um, I'm going to show you in a second when I go into, into the portal online. So the first thing is obviously the outcomes and the indicators. And if you navigate in the portal by program, you will see outcomes and indicators that are relevant and reasonable and meaningful for the type of program that you're working with. And in addition to that, you would find the actual measurement tools, which I think is what's most attractive to um, a lot of people because it's so hard to find those measurement tools. Um, and the other thing that's uh, available is the uh, managing service delivery part, and that has to do with some of the things that have been brought up uh, several times at this conference, um, which is, first of all, you know, who is your target population, how do you know that you're reaching that particular target population, and then secondly, what are the types of activities that need to be um, implemented in this particular type of program, and um, how do they need to be implemented in terms of things like quality, dosage, duration, uh, that kind of thing. And so um, I'm going to show you that as well. And there, there may be um, measurement tools as well that you will find. And the big uh, deal that everybody was excited about two years ago in our conference was uh, that you will be able to click a button and download any tool that you want into your ETO software. That button I will not be able to show you, but I can assure you that uh, Dave Butts has been working on uh, creating that uh, download functionality uh, all weekend long, and it's going to be available for you um, probably certainly before uh, the end of the year. Okay, so I have um, some slides just in case it doesn't work online, but I think that it does work online, so we will try that. So here you see um, the, what the Outcomes and Effective Practices Portal looks like right now, and you'll see there's a little bit of red to indicate that it's currently in beta version. Um, you all are able to go and use it right now. It's oepp.org. And the only thing I would like you to know is that some of the content may be changing um, in the next few months before we have our official launch of the portal, which will probably be the, the end of this year or the beginning of, of next year. And I also want to thank uh, many of you in this room who have been part of beta testing this for both the technology and the content. Um, we have gotten a lot of great feedback, and we know that there are certain things that we're going to be uh, changing as, as we move forward, both with the technology and with the content. Um, so what I'm going to show you first of all, and feel free to interrupt if you have questions or would like to go to any particular pages. Um, first of all is navigation by program. So you have three ways that you can navigate. One is by program, the other is by outcome, and then the third is to just simply search for a measurement tool. Um, and right now I'm going to go ahead and browse by program. And we right now only have content in under child and youth development. So the areas that we have available right now, you see on the screen, it's uh, after school programs and uh, mentoring, nutrition and physical activity, and then school-based bullying prevention, and uh, sex ed and tutoring. And all of this content has been developed by Urban Institute and, and Child Trends. So I will take the example of uh, school-based bullying to um, show you what it looks like. And here, first of all, we have a little bit of a, a description of the type of program, just explaining, uh, sort of uh, narrowing down what uh, type of information will be available for what type of programming here. Because, of course, there are other kinds of bullying programs as well. Uh, this is particularly for school-based. And then we have the uh, sources cited, and we have additional resources, so you can uh, click on either one of these, and then you can get uh, links to uh, other resources. Um, and actually, this is uh, um, important because one of, the, uh, one of the distinctions between the Outcomes and Effective Practices Portal and other websites that are available is that um, we are focused entirely on performance management as opposed to evaluation. 
And um, that what that means in this case, it's also as a, not just as opposed to evaluation, but as opposed to implementation of programming. So what that means in this case is that um, we will be providing, we will mention, you know, what an effective practice or a promising practice is, and then we will provide you with ways of uh, suggestions for how to track it or ways to measure whether you have actually been successful at implementing it properly. Uh, but we would not get into details about how to actually implement it. So when you have something like um, a mentoring program, we might tell you things like um, the relationship between a mentor and a mentee are very, very, that's very, very important and here's a way to, to measure it and we'll explain why it's important, uh, give you the measurement tools and all of that. But in terms of uh, advice on how to develop those strong mentoring relationships, we will not be uh, getting into that kind of detail, but we will link to additional resources for that kind of information like this. Okay, so uh, part of the feedback we have gotten is that people want an overview on the uh, first page. And so what you're going to see on the next pages are uh, managing service delivery, including these four things right here. And then we have on the outcome side um, several outcome areas that we can uh, click on down here to get to. Um, I'm going to skip right to the uh, managing services and you'll see that it says quality of services here. It's, this is one of those things we have gotten feedback and decided we're going to skip a level of clicking because we have been told it's too much clicking and so we're going to, do, uh, to change the technology a little bit and we will not have this level of quality of services. Uh, so just ignore that for now. So here we have split it into uh, four different um, areas that are important when you're managing um, the implementation of a school-based bullying prevention program. And one of those is, are you fostering a safe and supportive environment? And if I click on that, we have information about, um, about that and sources cited additional resources again. And then we have um, the tool, the school environment uh, survey in this case, a little bit of information about it, and uh, overview, you know, the population that it's for, that kind of thing. And then when we get down to uh, view, copy, tool for measurement assessment, you have here all of the questions and answer options and um, information that you need here. And this is where you would be able to click a button to download it into ETO. So it downloads as an assessment? Yes, it would download, uh, it depends on what it is, uh, as an assessment or as a survey. Some are, have to be linked to the participant name and some would be anonymous. Okay, so I'm going back to the uh, school-based bullying, the overview of the program, and um, I will skip right to the um, outcomes. So we have the outcome areas here, and uh, we have education, health and safety, and psychological and emotional well-being, and I'm gonna click on education, and uh, the outcome school climate, and then we have indicators, uh, perceived school safety and student-teacher relations, and I'm going to click on perceived school safety. And you see that there are three tools available for, to measure uh, this particular um, outcome and indicator. And um, in this case, I'll uh, click on this informal social control scale. And again, you have, it looks, in the sa looks the same way that it looked under the managing services um, section. Uh, with the uh, tool available right here. So some, this will change a little bit once we get that um, availability to download into it here. You'll see what a screenshot of what the assessment would actually look like right here. Okay. And that is a quick um, demo of the navigation by program. And uh, you can also do something like uh, search for a tool 
like, uh, let's see, self-esteem. That's something that people often want to know how to measure. And then that actually brings back a whole bunch of different uh, tools that have self-esteem included in them, included the Rosenberg self-esteem scale down here. So um, if you click on Browse by Outcome, then you would be able to see all of the outcome areas and all of the outcomes and all of the indicators and all of the tools um, available in the entire portal, as opposed to when you click by program, when you navigate by program, you see what's available, what's sort of relevant for that particular program. So that's a quick overview of the portal. Does anybody have any um, questions or comments? Yeah. So I see there's a login in the top, so you would access it and you to have no, actually, um, the login is only for uh, us up here who are uh, developing the content and um, uh, need to log in to enter that. So we have this whole uh, system on the back end. But for everybody else, right now, anytime, you can just go to oepp.org and you can access everything in here. Um, we have about 130 tools in here right now. Where are the other programs that come online? Um, there are tons of different programs we could include here, so it's going to be something that will go over many years. Right now, we have um, uh, Workforce being developed by Public Private Ventures, and um, some of the next program areas, um, I think I have a slide with that. We, we recently, it all depends on funding, so we have um, gotten some additional funding and we'll be able to get to some new areas uh, but uh, you know the more funding the more content basically the bottom line the social solutions is one partner and we're funding the technology and and my time and uh, Jeff's time who's sitting back there um, and uh, the funding goes directly to child trends and to urban Institute to create the content Yeah. Is access to this only for uh, ETO subscribers or for any non No, it's for anyone. It's on the web, oepp.org. Anyone can go to it. The only thing that's different for uh, those of you who are using ETO is that you will be able to download a tool into your instance of ETO. So everybody else can just uh, print out what they want or you know do whatever they want from, from that perspective other than the downloading. Is there any restriction uh, as to who can actually download it? Like, for example, Yeah, that's a good question. It's going to be limited to uh, administrators. So, y because in ETO, only an administrator would be able to create an assessment, and uh, the administrator needs to keep control over what's in the system and, and all of that. And so only administrators, <laughs> yeah. So some of you have learned that the hard way, right? Uh, so only administrators will be able to download it. It's basically going to be a button you'll put in your name and email and, and uh, some of that information. And then it comes to us and we'll get it into your system. Yeah. Is there going to be more information about the It's um, there are effective practices, as in uh, what are the features of programs that um, that work and are or are promising, likely to be effective. But it's not. This site is not about evidence-based models. So not full models that have you know, everything codified, that's not what this site is about. Does that make sense? Well, kind of, but I just did a review on um, the fully imagined program, so, you know, in general, there's possibly more information that you could get from the program that is saying, you know, well, this piece in here and this piece in here and look at components, and I don't think there's research for a lot of them that show specific pieces that look at as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to let Mary talk to speak to that because she actually um, was part of creating that content. Do you want to? Yeah. <coughs> That's a really good question. Is that you who talked because I was behind the poll? Okay, great. Um, <coughs> we, we have um, ways of 
basically reviewing the literature to identify effective practices. And maybe these are not those that have been tested like in a random assignment evaluation design. Um, but there are those that have, um, there are common features of effective pro programs. Um, and they are, some come from, it depends on how well the, f the field is developed. For bullying, it's not as well developed as it is, for instance, as like violence prevention or other substance use prevention. But um, like overall violence, when I say violence, like delinquency, physical aggression, et cetera. But bullying is not as well developed. Um, so we looked at meta-analyses. We looked at other um, literature reviews. We looked at uh, common um, features of effective programs. And that's how we came up with the, uh, the practices, quote unquote, effective practices that are listed in the, in the um, managing services delivery co content. I just wanted to add to that point that um, we are hoping that the information in this portal, that, that we can make the case to foundations and other um, people in the community that there is insufficient information in, in the case of effective practices and that this might um, spur additional work and research in that area. So um, that's probably a little further down the road, but it, it's certainly a, a purpose that we've, we've spoken about in terms of this portal. Who funds the portal? Uh, well, if you don't mind, why don't we just, we have two more slides, which I think are going to answer some of these process questions, and then we'll have still plenty of time for additional questions. Okay? How do we get out of this? Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe not. That's right. This is right. Okay. And how do we get to slides here? Slides here. Thank you. Okay. So um, in terms of the history, uh, we, we go back about two to three years now and um, referring to this great idea, um, Steve talked at lunch about how there had al already always been this outcomes library within ETO, but th it wasn't really sufficiently build out, built out. And uh, I, I think even before Urban Institute got involved that Social Solutions was having conversations with people like Child Trends and public private ventures where they, they were considering contracting with them to develop content only for ETO users. And then the light bulb went on where, why not make this a free uh, resource for everyone in the community? There's so much capacity that needs to be built in the sector. And um, so that was all churning in 2009, um, Urban Institute. You know, we started talking with Jeff, and um, we had something called the Outcome Indicators Project, which happens to be one of the most visited pages. but. That's just outcomes and indicators and select, uh, suggested data collection strategies, but doesn't actually have the tools. So in that sense, it was insufficient. So it was really a nice way to bring all this together for us. Um, in 2010, we, we had the initial prototype. Um, was it 2010? When did, when did uh, two years ago at the ETO conference? It was, yeah, so I, at the end of 2009, I think we actually had uh, beginnings of a prototype at least. Uh, we, we had regarding the funders, um, right now it's all private foundation funding um, in answer to the question. And we had some initial um, operating support from the Gates Foundation, World Bank, uh, that got us started in 2010. I think Child Trends had through Atlantic Philanthropies and some other internal resources, but that we were able to, uh, we had liberty to use. Uh, we formed an advisory committee. We have about 15 people on that committee um, representing foundations, um, uh, you know, associations, you know, people like the National Assembly for Human Services. Uh, and then we started to develop content development. We, we started with uh, sex ed and mentoring. Uh, and then through the beta testing, we realized, well, we, we got some of it right, but we, we really need to improve. And so we've been working both on improving the navigation as well as how the content is presented. Uh, the beta testers were practitioners as well as experts, so we, we kind of got both sides, of, you know, because we really want to maximize utility of this product. So now in 2011, um, at the, in M March, I think it was March 1st, um, the Rockefeller Foundation convened a whole bunch of funders. There were about 12 to 15 funders, and we kind of made our pitch for why this is worth it. I mean, we got really great feedback. Uh, someone from Rockefeller was like, this is like the holy grail. You know, this is, this is a dream come true. And so we got a lot of feedback. We, we're starting to, um, as I indicated at the start of the presentation, get um, s some grants. I think we fundraised about $300,000 
Uh, since that meeting, uh, we probably, in truth, need a couple, two to three million. Um, if, if we get to uh, 40 to 50 additional program areas, we think by the end of this year we'll have about 10 developed, 10 to 12, and, and at that point we'll do the first public launch. Um, I think I'm jumping ahead into the next steps rather than talking about history. Um, regarding the content development, including new partners, we, we did get a grant from uh, Fidelity uh, Charitable Trust, their Board of Trustees Fund, and that was to do two things, to develop a new content area, but to also test a model of, of building out partners. So we, we uh, selected public-private ventures. Uh, we've been working on a training module. You know, this is a way to sustain and build out content more quickly. And so they were able to provide a little general support to let us do all this other stuff besides just develop content and um, the technology. And um, so just in terms of the what next, as I said, the, I was kind of straddling these two slides. Um, the new content areas about to come online are workforce, homelessness, uh, gang prevention, and social and emotional skills. The, the most recent grant was from um, Edna McConnell Clark Foundation, and uh, that's that's the child trends. And um, you know we we sh we're sharing the funds between urban and child trends. Um, and that will be substance use. Uh, okay, and substance use. So that's that. This just came in a, a week ago. Um, as I said, we. We need to do a lot more fundraising, so for those of you who asked the question about when are more content areas coming online, if, if you um, have a particular area of interest and have a lead or a tip or know someone who might be a good source, and, and we're kind of at this point looking also for the, the unexpected. I mean, is it going to be a community foundation that steps up? Is it going to be uh, maybe a, a group of you know, uh, associations, affinities, who may each want to put you know, a few thousand dollars on the table to, you know, get into a new program area. So we, we probably need to be a little creative as well. We're looking to the national foundations to give the real big seed money, but we think it takes about forty to fifty thousand dollars to build out a single content area, at least at this point in time. Uh, we have a business plan underway, but that's all about sustainability as well. And as we introduce new features, right now this is all free of charge, but we may end up um, moving to a model where they're sort of basic free usage, but if you want these additional services, you know, more um, in-depth webinars, you know, walking through how to use this, how to really tailor it to your organization, that kind of stuff, maybe we'll start to charge modest fees to help build just a sustainable uh, revenue stream for the portal. We're, we're not going to get foundation support uh, interminably. Uh, the official launch, as Ingvild mentioned, will likely be later this year or early next year, and that'll be the 10 to 12 program areas with and we'll take it out of beta. Right now you'll see a little bit of unevenness in how the, the uh, information is presented and we're cleaning that up and we're going to improve some of the navigation. Uh, in terms of technology improvement, uh, well, I just mentioned that. Um, but some of the, the enhancements that we want to do, we, we do want to get quickly to uh, developing communities of practice, some basic level webinars, uh, because right now we've, we've taken a little feedback from some experts saying, well, you know, who are you kidding? People are going to come in, they're going to have to be completing some RFP, and they're just going to come in and go to that search tools feature and download some tool to show that, you know, they know what they're doing. And frankly, we will fall seriously short of our expectations of, of using this um, to really transform how people are managing to performance if, if that's all the only kind of way that this portal is used. So we need to think about, and likely with your feedback, how do we build the webinars? How do we really enhance the usefulness and, and the usability within organizations um, to make this work? So that's what I have. Um, we can take more questions. Yes? Uh, when you download one of the assessments or the tools into an assessment or survey, can we edit them? Sure. Um, well, it, here's, uh, I can't speak exactly how it's going to work with an ETO, but say, say you're not ETO. I mean, certainly you can do that. We, we are attempting where possible to provide tips or advice and guidance where that is not, you know, would not be a good idea. You know, if there's this scale that, you know, needs to stay together and if you start sorting and substituting, it's not going to have any validity, you know, we'll advise you. Sure. If you wanted to, to measure in the midst of this general future, sure. Yeah. Okay. The answer is yes, I've been told. Why not will cause the introduce or that the introduce for the beginning of 2012? It, it, we, we, uh, the funding commitment is to have that developed this year. So it'll be late this year or first of next year. 
Anything else? Okay. Well, thank you very much.